So I'll, what we'll do here is I'm going to turn over to David. He's going to give an opening statement, and then Coach Martin will go next, and uh, then we'll just turn over for questions, and we'll we'll get knock all those out. So David, I'm just going to turn it over to you and just get us going. Okay, Dave, thank you. Um, certainly, it feels <laughs> it's been a whirlwind since August. The last time we got together like this and discussed the the situation. Um, it's an exciting time for us to know that Maction is going to be back on the field this November. Um, I'm thankful to the presidents for allowing us to move forward and, and work towards this day and, and this, this effort that we're going to undertake here to get this going. And I'm excited for our student athletes to have the chance to compete. And I, I trust in the coaches and, and all of us around the program that we're going to keep these kids healthy and safe and and, and do everything we can to ensure a, a, as good of a season and a chance to defend our MAC championship as, as we possibly can. And uh, just thankful that we're here talking about games and, and potentially football. And, and it's an exciting time for us here at Miami. All right, Coach, go ahead. Yeah, obviously excited. There's, there's a lot of positives, obviously, um, with everything that's transpired this fall. Um, not going to play, going to play everybody trying to get on the same page and make their own decisions. Um, obviously really excited for the kids. Um, you know, our players, our players need this opportunity. They need to get back to some level of normalcy. We know this, this season won't be normal by any stretch, but it'll, it'll at least be a step in the right direction. Um, I think, I think for the league, it's, it's, it was, it was an awesome thing to get accomplished for for us for a lot of different reasons and getting back on a normal schedule finishing the fall season with everyone else and not being the outlier I, I think that was very important so we're excited to get going we got a lot of work to do in a short period of time we've been fortunate um, our medical people have done a really good job um, with with our kids all summer we had you know we had some really good protocols in place it's hard all over the country at the, you know colleges and and dealing with with COVID and trying to keep everybody safe and, and, and have enough players to play is, is, you know, we're, we're to the point where we're going to get this opportunity. We still got a lot of challenges ahead of ourselves to, to make it work and actually have an opportunity to get as many games in this fall as possible. But I am very confident our medical people will give us that best opportunity and we will work hard to keep everybody safe and we'll work hard to, to have a great, a great 2020 season. So just the fact that we get this opportunity is pretty awesome. All right, if you have a question, just go ahead. I got a question for both Chuck and David. Uh, it's Terrence Moore. Uh, and the question I've got is, this involves college football in general. Do you guys think that this year is sort of a one-off, so to speak, when it comes to this COVID season? Or do you think there are going to be some things, big things, small things, that's going to carry into next season and beyond that's going to change college football forever? Or you know, the little things or big things. Uh, I'll take a shot, Terrence, at answering first. You know, it's a, it's a fair, fair question. I just I haven't even begun to think about next year and what things might look like or how this might carry forward. Frankly, I'm too wrapped up in the today and trying to make sure that we're providing the environment Chuck described for our kids, you know, as, as safely as we can. Um, you know, to me, when those kids get, you know, we have a lot of work to do to get to a point where they're playing. But assuming we get there, I think when those kids get out there and start competing, uh, like we've seen in the kids on TV, I, I, I think they're going to think this isn't an asterisk. They're going to think this is legit. Um, we're still going to crown a MAC champion. There's still a lot to play for. And, and yes, the season is shorter in all those different situations. But, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, the kids are going to be thankful to have the opportunity and uh, we'll take advantage of that. And, and what, what it, I think try, getting the games in in the fall does allow next year to go off, you know, in its entirety with no, with no changes to the schedule. There was some concern about moving to the spring and what that might mean for next fall. But, but with this move, I, I think that does help clarify next year a bit more. Yeah, I think, to answer the long term, you know, I don't know necessarily with college football, but my my best guess is 20, 2020s changes all in all walks of life, whether it be college athletics or any other form of business 
or any other thing that's going on in America, I would say that 2020 changes all permanently and we don't know what we're, what's it going to look like coming out the other end. But um, I think, I think COVID's changed things in this country for probably, probably forever. And we're going to be a part of that. What it looks like, who knows, but I'm with David. I'm more, I'm more worried about this 11 week sprint that we got. We have this incredible opportunity to undertake and I know how excited so many people are, um, not only just the players, but so many other people are that there's going to be a little more college football and there's going to be college football on the map this year. So short term, it's an incredible opportunity. We'll get through this, you know, and then come January, we'll try to figure out what the long term ramifications are. This question is for David. When did the narrative kind of or the discussions kind of change from a month and a half ago when you said, hey, we're not playing in the fall to now, hey, we're full steam ahead, we're going to play? Well, I know just for us individually here at Miami, we started thinking about how things could be different when, when the NCAA started talking about a basketball start date around Thanksgiving. And if you just, if you just play that out and do the math backwards, which for some of us isn't that easy, right? But you take six weeks before the start of basketball, we were going to have kids running full contact practices in basketball in October. So how does that mesh with the debate that we we couldn't have football happening right and and so that that kind of conceptual framework was was something I was struggling with talking about and what really changed it Chris was you know we actually procured a machine here at Miami that can do this antigen rapid testing and we have it in our possession and, and once we knew we could have that that really started to change the mentality around that this we can execute this. Uh, David, why did the league decide to do six games and, and to start when it does? I, I think there was there was a lot of dialogue about when we could realistically get started. And I think the football coaches had some input too there, but just trying to get things wrapped up and, and started with practices and there were a few schools that were in shutdown mode um, with practice of any kind uh, over the last two weeks so I think as a league we just felt like starting that November 4th date was the one that was going to give everybody the best chance to ramp up and be prepared and and if you just again do the math forward this time not backwards um, that that leads us to a MAC championship game December 18th or 19th at Ford Field and so that's that's why the decision for six was was kind of the only decision we felt we had at that point. You mentioned you guys have a antigen machine. Um, this four times per week, is that going to be uh, paid for by the conference or by the individual schools or, or a mix? How, how is that going to work? The league is working on procuring um, a company that will do this testing four times a week kind of turnkey for the, for the institutions. And um that that announcement is scheduled to come out this week. It's it's if it's the company, I think it's one that has done other conferences and is doing other schools and they've done other tournaments and events at the professional level. So um, we're confident in what they've presented to us that it's going to work. And uh, it's a very set protocol that 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 the league will manage. And frankly, um, we're going to use our other machine for the rest of our sports, to be honest with you. David, uh, with the number of cases that are being reported at Miami, how confident are you guys that you guys can get this under control on campus so that you guys can get to that November start date? Well, I know President Crawford and the, the, the entire you know, university leadership has worked very hard with testing. We've been very aggressive in our testing as an institution and very open in reporting our numbers. And those numbers have dropped significantly in the last week. Um, I think the daily average, the daily case yesterday was 20 new ones. And so we're going to continue to monitor that, obviously, and, and continue to look at that within the framework of what we're doing here in athletics. But um, we're going to take every effort we can to continue to educate and do the right things. And, and I think, you know, just speaking specifically to student athletes, if they know they're going to get tested four times a week, I think that's going to have a habit of changing behavior, no matter what, just the, just the thought of it, right? So um, my hope is that Miami will continue to see a decrease in cases and will continue to have success in that end going forward. David, do you know who your Mac West opponent crossover is yet? 
We do not. I, I, Bob Generelli is working on the schedule. I think that will be out the end of this week, I believe, um, coming up. And I know we're playing the five teams in the East. Um, my guess is they'll protect the, the Toledo Bowling Green and Miami Ball State crossovers. And so, you know, if I had to guess, I'd say it was Ball State, but I do not know that for sure. Coach Martin, when does practice start and what is the plan uh, of getting the team back? Um, practice, full padded practice probably will not start for at, at least another week, if not another week and a half or two weeks. We're, we're, we're you know, lifting and, and, and it's kind of a NFL style OTA walkthrough style, working our kids back in and building a base, um, not only a physical base, but a, a conditioning base to make sure um, we still have 30 some days before the opener. So it is a tight window, but there is plenty of time to, to do it right and not rush it. Obviously when you've, when you've, we're postponed. The, the initial reaction is to rush back in there and hit it 100 miles an hour. And that's what we all want to do, coaches and players. But our strength staff and our medical staff have been really good throughout all of this of just kind of managing the, the fluidity of the situation in the workout. So getting a handle on where all our kids really are at and then progressing over that next, you know, seven to 14 days progressing right into, you know, full contact practice over, over that two week period. Coach, can you tell us a little bit about your team this year and just what you're hoping to see on the field and what you like about this group? Hey, I've been waiting for that question for, <laughs> I don't know, since March. So that's awesome. We actually have a football question. Me and David talk a lot and it's, 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 I don't know what it is. It is what it is at the end of the day, funny, sad, whatever. Like the last time we had a conversation about anything but COVID, you know, is is a long time coming he said a couple weeks ago man man i wish we could just talk about how we're going to do practice or how we're going to how we're going to do so so um we think we have a good team obviously we were really really young a year ago um we you know we have 17 starters returning uh uh at least at least we did before all this hit and people start going in different directions. So um, we, we knew we were going to be young a year ago, and obviously the kids and coaches did a great job and we won the MAC title. So we, we've got a great nucleus back. Um, we're excited for this opportunity. We, you know, we started four true freshmen on offense and they did really well, but we also firmly believe that those kids got a huge upside and, you know, certainly weren't at their peak their freshman year. So um, we also have a very good recruiting class come in that we think can also help us. So, um, we think we think we're in a good position not only for this year but for years to come at, at Miami football to be to be a team that can compete for championships on a year in year out basis. I have a question about the schedule, and probably David can answer this. You guys had uh, probably the most attractive home schedule in maybe twenty years, perhaps. And I, I was looking ahead. Is Missouri still scheduled to come to Miami? I think in twenty twenty five. I think they're on the schedule. And Terrence, I'm t you keep hitting me up with these questions about the future. Um, uh, my life, I have impeccable bad timing with sports. And, and there is no question that this year's schedule being interrupted um, is probably one of the worst ones we could have had interrupted. I mean, having Cincinnati Army at home, uh, coming off a MAC championship, seven home games, we were trending in a really positive direction with a fan, with our fan support and everything else. And um, like Chuck said, COVID's changed everything and it's changed it for a lot of people. So no complaining. I get it. It's, 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 it is what it is. Um, but as we move forward, yes, Missouri is on schedule to come to Miami. Um, I will check my calendar here to make sure I tell you the correct thing, because what I don't want to do is. Well, well what, they, they, here, here's what I'm getting at. Because like, I was looking at some of the other teams you got, like Long, Long Island, I think next year, you got Robin Morris at some point or what have you. How easy would it be to try to get a schedule together similar to what you had this year, which was obviously a great schedule. I'm talking about from a home schedule standpoint. Is that going to be difficult moving forward, particularly given uh, the chaos in college football with all the – schedule disruption this year or, 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 or you, said you haven't thought about that, I'm sure, but at some point you'll have to think about that. I'm sure. Well, let me just, and for, for clarity purposes, Missouri does come here September 13th, 2025. That is the scheduled okay. date and we have a signed contract with them. Um, 
I don't, I don't know what the future is going to hold Terrence about whether we can realign something. I think army certainly a team we, we could schedule again. Um, uh, there's lots of other opportunities. I think there's going to be some movement and shifting within our ranks as far as how we schedule, how we look at things. And so we'll certainly be flexible and, and try to put the best schedule we can out there for our fans. There's always finances involved. Um, football scheduling is like a giant Rubik's cube and, and uh, sometimes the colors don't line up and sometimes they do. So you just keep spinning it until you get it right. But we'll work at it and, and hope we can recreate something similar to what we had this year as soon as we can. Coach, over the last week or so across college football, um, some high profile draft picks, potentially prospects have been opting back into their season. Have you talked to Tommy Man Manny or um, Danny about doing the same? Yeah, they're uh, yeah. We've reached out to them, obviously, um, as this have all unfolded. We talk, we've been talking to them throughout, even when it wasn't unfolding. So, yeah, right now all three of them are are planning on playing this fall um, and opting back in, if that's what we call it. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> these these things we come up with. So, but yeah, all all three of them are are, are planning on playing this fall. I, I've been in communication. Um, we've left it up to them. Those kids have been so wonderful for us and have great opportunities uh, beyond college that I just told them I'm, I'm for whatever they decide. If they're, if they're feel comfortable with just kind of moving on and, and, and taking that next opportunity, that is fantastic. And we're very appreciative of what they've already done. If they want to come back uh, because now we have a fall season, obviously I have no issue with that either. So all, all three of them, we just kind of gave space, but they've all, they've all kind of reached out to me and said that, Hey, if you guys going to play, we we're always planning on playing the fall and we would like to play. So we're, we're optimistic. All three will be suiting up uh, here, here in a few weeks will be very good for Miami football. David, the four tests per week are more than anybody except the big 10 and the PAC 12. How, important was it to have that many and, and how much of a factor was that in coming back? Um, it definitely was a factor because there was lots of different debate about what the right amount is. And um, I think the States where our league is located, you have to look at some of the trends and how they've been looking at things from a testing perspective and also lockdown perspectives. When you think about, you know, how Ohio's handled it, Michigan's handled it, Illinois, Indiana, even New York, um, New York still has a bunch of travel restrictions that if they tried to play schools from other states, they wouldn't even be allowed to right now. Now, the schools in the MAC footprint, they can. But but all those challenges go into it, Chris, and I think the president's just landing on four felt comfortable. It's, you know, it's basically every 48 hours with one right after the game also, um, the next day after, I should say. So, you know, that just kind of sets up your week, and, and we're going to track it on a weekly basis and, and see where the numbers take us. There, there's a lot of work to be done. Let's not, none of us are, are, I'm happy about the announcement, but there's a lot of work left. And if you think about what the disruption has looked like already in college football, there's been what, over 20 games that have been postponed or, or canceled. Um, and so, you know, we'll be able to sit back and watch how this plays out over the next month with all of college football. And, and continue to learn and, and understand what's happening out there and, and get our kids, obviously they'll be focused on what they're doing, but um, there's still a lot left to be resolved in terms of how this works itself out over the next month with, with the entire sport of college football. I was kind of curious, what kind of conversations, and this is for Chuck and David, what type of conversations did both of you guys have with President Crawford about whether or not uh, you should resume play uh, this season? I've had zero, so David can answer. <laughs> yeah, Chuck, yeah, Chuck. Chuck's obviously left that to me. Uh, I report to the president. Uh, Chuck reports to me. So um, I've been the one in communication with the president Crawford, and it's it's been daily, probably for the last two weeks, on this topic. So it's, there's been a lot of a lot of discussion and a lot of just making sure we're on the same page and understanding the facts and the information and um, making sure that we get clarity from the league on things. Because frankly, the league's trying to put all this together at a conference level and they've got different schools to communicate to. And some of the things that maybe they're telling Northern Illinois, are they telling us the same and just trying to make sure things are consistent. And so that's really where Greg and I have stayed focused. And to the earlier question, Greg and I are spending a lot of time talking about Miami in general and, and the, the, the city of Oxford and, and the trends that we're seeing and things that are happening. and. Um, 
you know, obviously we crossed a big threshold by bringing students back to campus a few weeks ago. And, and that's something that I'm, I'm on his cabinet and we monitor on a twice a week basis talking about it. So um, there's lots of different pieces, but, but Greg has been very involved. And also David, were you guys, and when I say you guys, I'm talking about Miami, uh, Mac in general, do you think you guys were any, under any pressure to come back, say once the Big Ten decided to come back? Was, did that put any pressure on you guys to say, okay, we have to kind of get this ball rolling since the other conferences are deciding to opt back in? I, I, I think the, big, the difference the Big Ten made is that in our geographic footprint, with them coming back, basically everybody was playing high school, college, and pro except us in our footprint. And, and that's what probably started to tilt, like, we should probably think about, we, we need to try to do this. If, we, if the medical doctors, and it's important I mention them because they haven't been mentioned on this call yet, but the league put together a group of medical advisors. And if they were going to say that we could do this with the, with the development of this rapid antigen testing, um, we should look at doing this. And, and then after the Big Ten, it was the other conferences started to indicate they were likely going to come back too. Um, I'm still on record that I think spring could have could have worked, but it has to work with everybody doing it. You know that it has to be something that everybody's on board, and it's pretty clear that 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 ship had sailed and it wasn't really going to happen. And so when the other leagues started looking at this, and other members in the MAC started agreeing as ads that we should recommend coming back if we can get the medical advisors to support it, um, that that's when the discussion changed. The medical group did a lot of great work and reported to the presidents and, and that led to the vote. Coach, how much different of a mentality is this season going to require than, than any season you've ever encountered in, in college football? Um, obviously from an organizational standpoint and, and, and having protocols in place, it's gonna be like nothing we've ever been through. I think once we get out there and play, like David said, I think, once the kids get on the field, they'll be on the field. They'll forget about that. That'll, that'll be what will be so good about this with that, whether it's, you know, a couple hour practice or a three hour game, it'll, it'll take them, <laughs> it'll take them out of reality for a short period of time, which we all need at times and, and just go back to enjoying what they do. As far as our day-to-day -day organization, um, there's a major, major, major plan in place to try to get, as many people through this as possible. If you go into this with the idea that everything's going to be perfect and there's not going to be COVID, to me, that's the biggest mistake you can do going in. You have to do the opposite that, hey, yes, everybody needs to be super careful. Everybody needs to make sacrifices and not just players. We always talk about players, but it's coaches, it's it's equipment people, it's training staff, it's it's anyone that could be in contact with your team. We all are going to have to make some serious safety sacrifices. But really the big thing will be how do we react to these positives and, and, and how do we move forward and, and limit the positives that they don't totally derail you. Obviously, if you have enough positive cases over a threshold, then you're going to get shut down. That's that's open and shut. That's not that's not debatable. That's just what happens. So can you manage your positives and can you can you do things as far as contact tracing proactively? And this is what our plan is going to be. We don't have it totally done, but we've been working on this for a while. Um, uh, can you limit a positive to just one positive? And there's there's certain guidelines by the CDC. There's going to be other guidelines. Like David said, we're going to get all the MAC guidelines that the league is putting out there because we're obviously going to follow those. We're obviously going to follow any state or local Butler County Health. So we've got to get all that information. That's where your medical staff is so important. That's where our medical staff has been so good up till now already that we're going to continue to rely heavily on them. Can we, can we limit what we do during the day so that if I test positive as a player, it doesn't zap a whole group? Because when you're looking at college football, and we've been talking to people daily, yes, there's, there's been some where it's just been a bunch of kids got positive and that shut the whole program down, and that's, that is what it is. A lot of the cancellations have not been too many positive. It's been one position group got a positive and their contact tracing knocked out the whole position group. And you can't play a game without a quarterback or a linebacker or a defensive line. And you keep reading in these articles that, hey, it wasn't a big outbreak, but one or two kids got it and it took out a whole group of players, which didn't allow them to compete on Saturday. So being proactive and being forward thinking 
and having a plan that there's going to be a positive and you can't panic and you can't go, oh my God, there's a positive COVID. There's been over 7 million positive COVIDs and it's not going away anytime soon. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to have to have a really good plan to, to try to limit the damage if you do get a positive case so that everyone else can still move forward. And I, I think we'll have a really good plan in place. There are some schools that are, that, have lived and learned, like David said, this timing for our league is not bad. I mean, you can always find the negative, hey, we're starting later than anyone else, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's some programs that started down one direction that I know coaches on and it failed, like their plan failed and they scrapped their plan already and they're on a new plan and the new plan's working much better. And we're taking that being a little bit late to the party is giving us in our league an opportunity to learn from other, other schools doing things good. And they're saying, yeah, we started this and it's really working well in our protocol, but also learning from other schools that, Hey, we tried to go this way and it was a disaster and we've shifted. And, and that's all really we've been doing for the last three or four weeks. Even if it was a spring season, I wanted to learn from everyone else's experience. So I think we're in a really good position as a league to, to give a really good go at it. It's not, there's no guarantees as we know. There's, you know, five games canceled again this weekend, but I think we're in a position to learn from others and really put a really, really safe and smart plan together. Chuck, Chuck, uh, coaches in general, and particularly college coaches, I know, and I've seen you at work too, you like to get up and close and personal to players to get your point across, sometimes very loudly. <laughs> So how much is that going to change now that we know that this virus flies in the air? Are you going to have to change that approach at all? I think, I think you have to, Terrence. I don't think you have a choice. 2020 has changed so many different ways. If, if we got to change our coaching styles a little bit different to be safer and smarter, I would say that's the least of our concerns right now. But you're, you're, you're right. And, you see, and it's, it's going to be a little bit habitual, you know, will be hard. Um, just because, you know, some of us have been doing this a while and your habit – the masks help, you know, we've done everything with masks. When we were up and running, we, we had masks on, even during our OTA, we wore masks. These, these, some of these masks that we used to wear when it got cold out, the kids, you can't wear a mask and play football. You can't wear a mask and play football. Then I showed a video of like our last five games last year and half my team already had masks on because it was getting cold, you know? And again, it's just, we know the power of the mind. If you tell yourself you can't do something, you probably can't do it. If you tell, and athletes are better than anyone at convincing themselves that they can fight through adversity. And then the timing of our schedule helps too, because when I have a mask on, it just, I don't know, just for me personally, like I breathe, it, it controls my breathing better. It controls my emotions better. I probably should have personally used it a long time ago in coaching. I probably could have helped me stay a little calmer at times when, but for our kids, we're going to be heading into the season in, in November, December. It's going to be pretty easy, I think, to wear masks even when they play and us having masks on. So, yeah, I think your point's very well taken. Anything we see that could potentially increase the chance of, of somebody spreading it to somebody else, we have to make that sacrifice and that adjustment. And that, that is a very good point. Everybody good? Coach, just one last question. Um, what was kind of your reaction or how are you feeling the past couple of weeks watching other teams, you know, go out there and play while you were sitting at home? Were you getting a little bit antsy? I don't know about antsy. It was more just kind of that pit in your stomach. It was hard. Honestly, I haven't watched a ton of college football for that reason. It's, I put games on. It's just hard to watch. And again, I haven't been mad or frustrated or any, like just, just sad more than anything. You know what I mean? And not, 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 not in a way like we should be doing this. It, this is, if there, was this, if there was one single plan that we're all supposed to follow, we would be all following. So obviously that's never happened. So we're all making adjustments on the fly. I have enjoyed watching a bunch of pro football. Like that wasn't hard because I, we're not a pro football team. So my, you know, I've, I've probably watched more pro football games the last couple of weeks than I've watched in 28 years. And I have enjoyed that. And that wasn't uneasy for whatever reason. But I just, I, you know, I put the Thursday night game on. I typically turn it off. I just kind of got that pit in my stomach and that, that, that missing something feeling. So I haven't – it's been hard. I haven't been able to watch it. But um, now I'm going to, like, I'm, I'm going to watch some games today because I feel – I hope that pit's not there anymore. So, and, so I think, Chuck, Chuck, and I don't want to speak for Chuck, but I know for a fact he's been really nervous watching Sloman kick. 
Yes. Yeah. No, you can speak for me. I bet. <laughs> the, my amazing thing is I was never nervous when he was here kicking because I knew he was going to make it. Now he's now he's getting paid. And I know the life of an NFL kicker is you, you make your kicks or you get cut. It doesn't matter. Uh, so it has been pretty nerve wracking, but it's been fun to watch a lot of our guys uh, in the NFL that that either Miami guys, which we have a ton or even guys, other guys that I've coached that are there doing good things. So. Chuck, Chuck, one quick question. You talk about kicking. What should the Falcons have done against the Dallas Cowboys on that onside kick at the end of the game? That, again, that's a great – Terrence, because usually, usually the second guessing is pretty easy. There's no way when that ball started to curve back away from – you know, it started curving back towards the, the Cowboys that anyone thought that thing was going 10 yards. In the jump, like they said, they should have pounced on it. To jump on it then, they would have got ridiculed because it was not going 10 yards. And then somehow, you know, football's a weird-shaped deal, and we always talk about it. So it starts spinning back the other way. And, they, and, and the Falcons guys were right there ready for it to pounce on The Dallas guy just, like – I mean, if you could kick every onside kick like that, the percentage of positive results for the kicking team would be way higher. And that's – I don't know that they could have done it. I thought they were all ready. They didn't give up on the play. They were all ready. The Cowboy guy just got to it first. I mean, it's – you know, we watch a lot of sports, and I hate when people say, I can't believe. I'm like, every day you watch sports, you see something you can't believe. It was just another one of those uh, tough for the Falcons fans, obviously. But that was that was a crazy play. Did you think yeah. after your first two years at Miami that one of your problems would be the nerves you have watching your players in the NFL? I probably didn't think that for it, but it's pretty cool that you bring that. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. So I, I definitely – I was envisioning some days having a preseason press conference as the defending Mac champs. I did envision that. So that, that is nice. We've worked hard and it's been a long time coming and David's been working at it one more year than I did. Cause he got here one year before I did. Uh, and, and it started to lay a lot of the groundwork. So it was, it was cool last year when we wanted to think back of all the hard work. Um, you know, that's, it wasn't so much about enjoying the moment. It was enjoying the six year for David, the seven year journey to really get Miami football back in such a, such a strong place. So um, yeah, interesting times.